sketchbook. So let's get into it. I first lighten up my sketch and I take up my other sketch. And I was considering adding a cut in the background. I thought, you know, why not? It'll help me keep things condensed into one space. So I start lining things out. And for anyone ever asking, what brush do you use? What brush do you use? I use Kyle's cartooning brush and I like smooth it out a bit so that way it fits my pressure. You know what I mean? But anyways, I played around with like different things, different eyebrow shapes. She's supposed to have like those puka eyebrows, but I kind of extend them a bit so they're not like perfectly circular. And I'm just doing my basic line art stuff. I do the same thing pretty much every single time, but sometimes I get like in a funk, I'm not sure what to do. So I experiment a bit here and there. I start lining out the eyes and I play around with like adding in the sclera. The sclera is the reflection of light in the eyes. Typically I add this last, but lately I've been playing around with just incorporating that into the line art of my pieces. Then I do the lips. The lips were a struggle. I've been changing up how I draw lips. I've been adding more detail lately, but I don't know. Like when I say more detail, I really mean that little stretch of tendon, I guess you could say, between the lips and like adding more dimension and depth. Now I'm just outlining her face, adding in those little details here and there. She has a pretty round face. And I like drawing round faces, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to emphasize the bone structure. And around here, I decided I hate the eyes. <laughs> I figured I could add more joy to the eyes by like squashing them in half to emphasize how the cheeks are like coming into play against the muscles of her eye. Now I line her hair here, but later I'm gonna go in and like add more details. I'm gonna use like a curly hairbrush, things like that. So in a way, those hair details were worthless and they didn't mean anything. <laughs> But they help me get the shape. Um, I like getting the shape first when it comes to drawing Afrocentric hair. Now the teeth, the teeth were a bit of a struggle. I have kind of sharp teeth, so when I reference my own, it's like kind of like a vampire thing going on. And I don't want to imply that a character is vampiric when I do that, but I want to like make it realistic and have some variety with how I draw teeth. At this point, I just got rid of my sketch. I like how I do the hands traditionally. Sometimes traditionally drawing things changes it. I'm not sure why, maybe it's like a muscle memory thing, but I'm working on the hands a lot. I struggle with drawing hands. I've gotten better at adding more structure to them so they look like little gummy things. They look like they actually work. But I just work on that. I really love the arm. I love this arm position because while it looks very awkward, you can tell what's going on with it. Does that make sense? Like it's not the most conventional way to draw an arm with the whole perspective and whatnot, but I feel like I succeeded in drawing the position of the arm and conveying that. Now his hair, I don't want to know what's going on in the back. His hair is so difficult to draw. I just speak by that. I just, I just go like that. Her nails were also a bit of an issue. I wanted more of a coffiny shape, but I feel like I always default like an almond shaped nail, which is like more long and slightly pointed at the end, AKA almond, like an actual almond. But um, yeah, I just keep adding line art, squashing, stretching things. I feel like I draw heads a bit too large, so I've been making it a habit to make the heads smaller, even if I think they look fine. And I just like add detail to his clothing. And I want this scene to kind of mimic like a movie scene. As you can see, I have some text in the bottom. It says, you're looking at a soft spot for you, Shug. So I want it to feel kind of like a vintage, like 90s anime style thing, you know? Um, I'm gonna go in later and add like grains and whatnot to mimic static, all that stuff. Here I'm just adding in the flat colors and I have a gray base. Um, I'm gonna be merging a lot of layers, but I use the gray base just to make sure everything's contained within a certain area. And then, because sometimes when you like use the fill bucket, there's like little gaps here and there, I'll later fill in the gray base with black. That way all the little gaps are filled in. That way like the pale yellow background doesn't show through the line art. I'm going in here with her lips and I spent a lot of time on her lips. I've really been getting into shading lips lately. 
I just blend the edges. I'm adding more shadows. Typically, I just give them like a two-tone lip, add some highlights, and that's it. But I'm going a bit more to add more structure and shape to it. At this point, I'm coloring in the line art. I keep the internal face line art the same shade of brown, but I darken up the outlining line art and especially the eye area. I don't like colored line art, I'll be honest. I always did like traditional pen and ink. So colored line art is kind of different for me and I didn't like it until I read a couple manhwas that used colored line art and I was like, okay, this is nice. You know, I had to find my own way of using it where it would have some black every now and then. But having a few bits here and there that are colored are like my preference. I'm adding in the highlights here. That's my favorite part. I was really trying to like, not go into it too early but I feel like highlights really add and like pull things together. They help you focus on certain areas and they help emphasize the shape of certain areas as well. I'm just touching up the lip area and then I darken up the eyebrows as well. I thought about going in and detailing the eyebrows more and like maybe using a smudge layer to like make it look like realistic hairs and maybe like adding a center gradient kind of like when you fade your eyebrows with makeup and I was like no. <laughs> I was too lazy. I add like a little details to Syndrome's face. I add like some light blushing and some freckles. Um, I use the Lush brush for freckling but he's turned around. Like, I can add more details with shadows later, but for the most part, I, there's not much I can do. I tried using line art as best as I could to, like, add more detail to him. So he's on, like, an equal drawing plane with Ludovica. But, and there is, like, a method in art where you only add focus like, a certain area. And the rest of the piece should look complete, but doesn't need to be as focused. Um, I've always struggled with that, so I can't say if I did that successfully, <laughs> but at least it's like an actual like technique that's used. Um, at least we use that in my still life drawing class. I'm adding more shading to the corner of her face. I was going to do like some basic cell shading, like not even touch the face. And I was like, you know what? Let me add a little bit more dimension. Let me create a mood. I'm thinking like in a dimly lit bar or something, just like having a little do -si do Maybe just like a jukebox playing in the background, who knows? But I want like a romantic aura. I blend in the shirt here and there. I start using different brushes at this point. I was using a hard brush the whole time, the Kyle's cartooning brush. And sometimes I'd use the round flat brush on opacity. But at this point I'm like, it's not enough anymore. I need to add more. And this is like the final stage. I do her hair. I've merged pretty much all the layers. Um, this is pretty much the final drawing stage. I'm going to add more like details and stuff after. But I have like a neon pink mohawk. So I'm giving her a neon pink mohawk. It's not technically the color pink, but it's close enough to fit the color palette. I just use the color of the shadow of Syndrome's hair to kind of like create that vibe that it's pink, even though it's technically like a dark red. Then I add the jewelry, and at first I didn't like it a lot because I typically do the whole like, I draw the jewelry, then I put like a stroke layer on it, but it was because the stroke layer was black and my line art was slightly colored. And even though sometimes it looks black in certain areas, that's just because the colors around it, it's really a dark brown. So I had to like make the line art for the jewelry also dark brown. I add some more reflective light from his shirt onto her skin. I like do like a lot of masking and whatnot to keep everything contained and within the little golden box. At this point, I like adjust the levels and whatnot. I add like a blur and I did this a couple times because I messed up the first time, but then I went back and fixed it. So I just put it in black and white, adjust the levels so they're what I want them to be, um, take off the black and white layer 
and then I like blur it, put it on top in like an overlay mode. I lower the opacity and then I use channel to create a chromatic abrasion. And then I added some noise to give it more of that vintage feel like it's on TV, all textured. I realized at this point I forgot to color in her mouth. So I added in more uh, shading and colors in that area. And I think I pulled everything together. And there we have it. There's our first little sketchbook drawing of the year. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Until next time. Bye.